Hey y'all, it's Crystal. Thanks for coming by today. Um, this video is just going to be a chat about the book Dreamcatcher by Stephen King. I read it recently and really didn't like it. And um, I thought I'd just kind of put it out there why I didn't like it. And um, as a part of my, you know, big sort of lifelong project of reading books that have characters with Down syndrome, I thought I would actually do a book chat about this one um, because um, the character with there was a character with Down syndrome in this book and I did not like how he was portrayed and things like that so I thought it would be worth just talking about about you know how I felt about the book and all that good stuff uh, so sort of general you know gist of Dreamcatcher as we're following uh, these four guys uh, Jonesy what are their names oh, Jonesy Henry Beater Beater Beaver and Pete Peter, Jesus and um, and it's a kind of a dual timeline. We go back and forth through, you know, through sort of present, the present day when the story was written. They're kind of middle aged now. And then we flash back to when they were kids and all that good stuff. Now, this book does take place in Derry, which was cool. It's always, you know, cool to be back in Derry. Uh, this town is just, you know, it's kind of one of those things that those towns where um, everything, you know, appears to be okay, but once you kind of scratch under the surface, there's definitely something, you know, not right with dairy, right? So if you've read it or in the movies, you know, you know about dairy. And um, basically, these guys, um, even you know, they're they're you know, adults and kind of all have their own lives now. They still get together once a year and go on a hunting trip, sort of in the woods of Maine, and um, just have you know a bit of a reconnection, you know, hanging out because they've just been friends since they were like middle school aged. So, okay. Now, the one time this uh, this most recent trip that we're on, this hunting trip, uh, something something happens. This stranger shows up, and um, he seems a bit off and strange. They're trying to help because he has been lost in the woods, you know, for a while or for like a couple of days, and all this kind of good stuff. Like, yeah, like, so of course they pull him in, they help him, and then basically hell breaks loose from there. And this turns into a story of um, you know aliens landing I mean I guess spoilers hmm, I don't know I don't recommend this book so if you choose to still read it I don't know <laughs> here's some spoilers and I, um, there's aliens there's like this virus is running around that looks kind of like fungal and then there's like things that they'll like, like ingest in people's stomach and they burst out of their buttholes I mean it goes to some places okay it goes to some places <laughs> It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> now, so for me, like the overall storyline, like I could have got behind. You know, you want to give me weird aliens, a, a crazy fungus, like attacking people, virus. I mean, I'm down. Like I could have, like I would have been on board. Like you know what I mean? I would have, I would have been on board, <laughs> even though it's kind of crazy down. Um, but again, you know, before without even getting to the character Down syndrome yet. The story, it just goes off the rails. It, once again, it is too long. It's way too long. Um, there's too much focus on some of these side characters. Like there's this whole military side of this operation because they've quarantined this area. And we're getting the back of stories from these characters, which who gives a flip? Nobody cares, dude. Like nobody cares, <laughs> honestly. Like we didn't, need, we didn't need all of that. So that was too much. It, it, it was too much and then like just some of the way the story went again like with these like he called he actually called them shit weasels like that burst out of the people bro what are you doing okay so he wrote this in 2001 and he wrote this this was the book that he wrote after he had his big accident where he got ran over uh, by a van or truck or something like that and, and you know he was in pretty bad shape and um, so he ended up from you know, what I read online he kind of wrote this out by hand and um, I think was probably all jacked up on like oxycontin and stuff I don't know um, and I guess you could tell just by the way the story just meanders and it's just bizarre there's some bizarre choices in here <laughs> and we're not even I guess so I'm not even got to the character with Down syndrome and his role in the story and something that I mean it could have been cool like it could have been cool man but it just wasn't and yeah so let's just get into that so um, 
the uh, the character with Down syndrome's name is Douglas, and um, he's referred to as Duddits through a lot of the through most of the book, kind of like a nickname, I guess, or something. And um, when these these four groups, of, you know, guys, when they were uh, like in eighth grade, I wrote them. I wrote down the year. Let me find it in my notes. Yeah, so they were in eighth grade. It's 1978. So thinking about the time period this is in, um, and they, um, they're you know, they're walking you know home from school or whatever, and they come across basically these teenage boys, three teenage boys. Um, I mean, just wailing on. Douglas and beating him up and they've like taken most of his clothes off and they're trying to force him to eat a dog turd. I mean, it's really serious. It's just really bad. And somehow they kind of get the courage to, so like, to like stand up to these guys and they try and they help Douglas out and, and all this good stuff. And, and really these, these four, four kids and then Douglas really kind of form a friendship and um, they start walking into and from school and hanging out with him and playing games. And it seems really genuine, like, you know, their connection with him and like an actual friendship, like it's not just out of pity, it like, it, it seems really genuine. So that, that's something that I, I did appreciate. Cause like I said, it seemed like a genuine, like they were, they liked Douglas and they wanted to spend time with him. So that's something that was actually a positive, probably the only positive. <laughs> and um, as, again, I kind of, as they get older and even you know they 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 have um, drifted apart from each other. They've definitely drifted from Douglas, and they you know they would go see him sometimes, but they hadn't seen him in several you know like a few years. And so by the time he he's now an adult in the uh, sort of adult storyline, he has gotten leukemia and is very sick. His mom's taking care of him, and um, he's just he's not well. Um, and which and, you know, leukemia is actually a big scare for people with Down syndrome. It, particularly more so when they're kids. Um, it's actually something that uh, kids with Down syndrome do have a higher risk of leukemia. So that is actually something founded in truth also. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's kind of how his story plays out. Now Duddits, along with, um, come on the other, he, they have this thing where he sees the line. And um, it's kind of like, I guess kind of like a I don't want to say magical power. <laughs> that sounds weird, but like a, a, you know, a sort of supernatural sort of thing that he, you know, where you really follow a line, like he, he sees like it represented by an actual line to, um, you know, find someone or um, things like that. And some of the other characters, I think it's Pete in particular, also has this thing where he like sees the line and can. Um, retrace footsteps to find something or you know look forward in a, in a way I don't feel like a fortune teller but <laughs> or like uh, seeing the future but it's a, it's a strange sort of power you know um, that uh, Douglas also has and it comes into play at the end of the book when well we'll talk about the end later I guess <laughs> so just like again some quotes and things that I wrote uh, while you know, I did listen to the on the audio, so I'd have to pause and be like, right, and have to rewind it and get the. <laughs> so some of these may be a little bit paraphrased, but the general gist, uh, these are things that I, I hated about this. Book. <laughs> so the R word itself, I mean, okay, um, was used many times, and I tallied 33 times that the R word itself was used, and um, that's just ones that I sort of caught and remembered to write a tally um, but we'll we'll say 33 times and um, that's a lot and <laughs> um, it is of course always in reference to or you know around the storyline of of Douglas and um, which wasn't the bulk of the book you know what I mean his story um, a lot of the time of course the kid you know kind of in the past storyline was not um, you know a big chunk of the book this book is huge but it wasn't a whole lot of time spent there. And so I mean, at the percentage wise, it seems like a high amount for sure. <laughs> it seems like a high amount of the word itself being used. Um, so yeah, so again, this is took, this did take place in 1978 and Douglas and all, any other kids that had disabilities or you know, learning issues or whatever, um, went to a separate school. So there was a separate school for them, which was called something, but everyone called it the our academy um, so so that's fun yeah so all throughout the book that was referred to as the R academy and um, 
So yeah, that was, that was fun. Uh, there was a quote, um, where am I at here? Oh yeah, so um, as they're walking by the R Academy, um, you know, kids, you know, they would see the kids at the other school, you know, and you saw them, but you didn't see them um, cause, because they were just part of the world's wallpaper. I guess there's actually some truth to that. Most people, um, you know, don't like to, you know, notice that there are actually people with disabilities living in the world. Whatever. So chapter five, the word mongoloid was used. I fucking hate that word. So it is so disgusting. <laughs> word is so disgusting. But it was used once in here, um, as there were a couple of instances in which Douglas was referred to as having Chinese eyes. Um, there was, uh, there's another one, yeah, uh, his eyes have a Chinese tilt. <laughs> Hated it. Okay. Um, so, okay. Chapter six is where we, we have flashed back into seeing, um, you know, we're, we're, they meet Douglas. He's getting beat up by these bullies and stuff. And he says, you're not supposed to laugh at an R words, at, you know, at R words, but he has a naturally funny face like a cartoon character. Why the hell would you even say that? I don't know. I just, I hated the language around, I hated the language around Douglas. I really did. And when I realized it was written in 2001, I don't care. One, I realized it was, it's a book. These flashbacks were set in, I guess, 1978. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. It's still unnecessary. Um, okay. So at chapter seven, we're following the kids as they're walking Douglas home after, you know, this bully incident. And, um, his mom is meeting them outside and, um, you know, they, they see this crude hopscotch, you know, what do you call it? Like hopscotch thing, you know what hopscotch is, uh, drawn on the sidewalk. And even that is beyond done. It's like, you can't properly draw a hopscotch. Like who cares? Why would you even put that in a book? It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything. It was dumb. The editor should have just took it, taken out that whole language. Uh, okay. So they take him home after the incident. Roberta is there and you know, she's asked the kids like, was he, was he wandering? Was he lost? Oh, well, this was a quote actually the mom. Was he wandering? Was he lost? I've been afraid to let him walk, but he wants so much to be a real boy. I don't know any mother of a kid with uh, with any kind of disability that would say that about their kid in any situation, that he wants to be a real boy. The fuck, okay? Pardon my French, but the fuck, okay? No, I don't, I, again, I don't care that it is set in 1978. I don't care that it was written in 2001. I don't care. I don't care. I, that would never, ever, 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 ever come out of anyone's mouth. Hated it. Okay. Chapter 11. Here's the Chinese eyes reference again. Okay. Um, side note, just a side note, something that I thought was really freaking weird. Okay. So when the aliens, <laughs> this is not to do with the deal, but I wrote it down because it, it bothered me. Um, when the aliens like come around, they, they sort of pass off this like telepathic ability to, to humans in the area. And there was this one instance of this like military guy, like so kind of like a grunt. It's like a kitchen worker, uh, military guy. His his brain was sort of like uh, penetrated to like help with uh, help with something, help another character with something else, and he sort of telepathically got into this man's brain. And the guy compares that telepathic event event to being raped, sir, sir. Please sit down. No, thank you. No. Again. What? W T F. Okay. Back to <laughs> back to the Down syndrome stuff. Okay. <laughs> so chapter sixteen is where we find out that they they all again see the line again this sort of like mental power that they have, um, and it's because Dud it sees because he is this magical disabled person, right? 
I will say in chapter 16, I wrote just because I wrote it down and I'll, I'll, I'll reference it here. There was some cool it references because again, this is takes place in, in Derry. So it was mentioned to the Losers Club. There was this like spray paint of Pennywise lives. There's a mention of the Barons, you know, just stuff like that. It's cool. Um, uh, chapter 19, um, an awful, awful quote. Uh, Downs sufferers have difficulty expressing concepts of time past and time to come. Ooh, that's a loaded one because he first he starts off with the Downs sufferers. People don't suffer with Down syndrome, they just have Down syndrome. It's just that's just how they're born. It's just a, a genetic thing. It's just genetics, man. They're not really suffering. Uh, and I most uh, most people uh, don't like when you shorten it to downs when you say something like downs oh is that downs oh he's got downs no his down syndrome is you know it's just two words you can say two words <laughs> you know what i mean um and it's you know it's a medical you know it's in the medical language like we can say down syndrome uh, just say it just say down syndrome don't say downs because people don't like it okay uh, and again, people don't suffer. I mean, and that's that's really sort of outdated language, and you see that across you know any kind of thing. You know, he suffers from cerebral palsy, or he suffers from whatever. Like, eh, it's just you know, it's a language thing. All right, so chapter twenty, Dunnitz is referred to as being magic, and makes them feel good. Yeah, that's fun. Uh, chapter twenty one, I just have WTF ending. <laughs> <laughs> because that was weird. Um, so I've, I've, uh, I've jumped the line here because I've just, um, I have gone out of order of my page. It doesn't matter because these are all just quotes. Uh, there's a scene where Jagless is definitely um, portrayed as being very childlike throughout the uh, book. Um, like blowing dandelions and like rolling on the grass and <laughs> just that's really freaking weird. So right back when they meet his mom again after the, the bully, I've gotten out of, I've gotten out of whack here. It's okay. Uh, you know they're kind of I think they're like sort of eating dinner around each other. They're just hanging out and they're and his mom's in there. And so one of the kids slips up and says the R school and um, and the mom says I don't mind. I know what people call it. Sometimes we call it that ourselves. Why? Why would she call it that herself? Why? Again. I don't care that this was written in 2001, and I don't care that this is set in 1978. I know of absolutely no one that would would call their child school that. Like, why would why would she do that? It made no sense to me. I feel like Stephen King must not know anyone with Down syndrome, at, or no one anyone with that parents of someone with Down syndrome. And again, Duddits is unlike anyone they know. They just make. He just makes me feel so good. Okay. <laughs> Chapter eight we find is when we find out that Douglas is very sick now with leukemias. And again, like I mentioned, his mom is taking care of him. Um, mom, the mom, he, Dada, he, they, they have this connection with these all of these guys, right? And one of the characters in the present time, well, spoiler alert again for a shitty book that you really shouldn't read. One of the characters has died, and. Um, and Duddits kind of feels that even though he's not around them and he starts really just crying and, and sobbing just uncontrollably he's very you know he's very upset and so his mom you know hears the sobs of a child but that's the thing about Duddits he's in his 30s now but he would die a child and not, and long before he turned 40. <sighs> this whole perpetualness of you know people with Down syndrome being childlike is very harmful and um, again, for a parent to perpetuate that, mm, again, I just don't think that it's just, it's not, it's not real life. You know, parents of people with Down syndrome or any kind of other intellectual disability where, you know, their learning is affected, um, it, it, it's just not, it's not a reality. And um, I just, I didn't like it. So he'll die land before he turned 40 just because he has leukemia. And this line, ooh, doggies, this line, Down syndrome turned him into Peter Pan and soon he would die in Neverland. What the fuck? <laughs> the fuck? I don't even know how to like explain that, the anger that I felt when I read that line. And I'm obviously feeling again now. I read it again. 
Um, it's pretty bad. It's really, really, it's really bad. Uh, so those are the, those are the quotes that I wrote down that just you know, really stuck out, really stuck out of it as but being bad, being bad ones. Um, so in general, again, as if I were to rate this book as um, you know on a scale of one to five, one being abysmal, uh, five being excellent of the characterization of a person with Down syndrome, how it was written. Of course, this would be one star, abysmal. I really didn't like it and. Um, it made me really uncomfortable. It made me really angry as a parent of a child with Down syndrome. Now, I know I come to this book with other things. I come to this book as somewhat as different, right? You know, like I have different feelings about this and a lot of people will probably just brush over a lot of this shit and um, roll on by, read the book and fine. And I hate the book because it sucks for other reasons, <laughs> because it does. Um, but in the, if, if me evaluating this book as I was intending to read it, as evaluating the character with Down syndrome, it was bad. It's bad and um, harmful. It's really harmful. It perpetuates a lot of really harmful stereotypes of, you know, people with Down syndrome being perpetual children, even though they're grown ass adults with feelings and emotions and, um, you know, all that good stuff that everyone else feels as well. Uh, it perpetuates the, the sort of always happy and happy go lucky and which is full of shit because I'll say it because of course people with Down syndrome are just like everyone else in that regards and they have guess what they have bad days too okay while well, a lot of times you know people with Down syndrome are again pretty easy going everyone that I you know a lot of people that I've met um, I I've hung out with kids and grown-ups and teenagers with Down syndrome a lot of times they're a lot, it really are easy going and fun to hang out with, but you know, they get angry, they get upset and um, you know, they experience the world like we do and get upset and sad about things. You know what I mean? They're, they are fully functioning people. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, I just, I can't recommend this book as being um, a good representation of someone with Down syndrome. Again, I feel like Stephen King just really laid into the stereotypes of someone with Down syndrome and maybe his own feelings about someone with Down syndrome, you know, at the time of his writing this, you know, I don't know, like maybe he doesn't actually know anyone has ever actually met someone with Down syndrome before or, you know, has outdated thoughts on that himself, you know, um, I don't know what he would feel about, you know, if he wrote the book today, I don't know, would it be any different? Hard to say, hard to say. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it there because <laughs> it's kind of long. It's kind of long, but these are my thoughts of, of Down syndrome or of Down syndrome of uh, Dreamcatcher, and um, you know again, it's focusing more on the character with Down syndrome. Uh, can't recommend it. Don't recommend it. I it is not good. So <sighs> alas. So let me know if you've read Dreamcatcher, I guess, and what you thought about it. Um, I do think it's one of most people don't don't particularly like. <laughs> Um, but of course I probably like it for don't or don't like it for different reasons. I, I really feel like it, you know, Douglas could have been a really integral part to this story or he f written in a different way. Uh, it's just a shame really. Um, so yeah, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time as always. And thanks for coming by and, um, yeah, till next time. Bye friends.